hello everyone. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesdays. I'm your host Paula Taylor and this is episode 58. So tonight I entitled the episode A Lesson in Letting Go and I almost called it grief as a lesson in letting go but I wanted to be clear this is not a show about grief. We've done a couple shows about grief. This meditation will not be about grief but I'm going to talk a little bit about grief because that's how my lesson came through. My lesson in letting go came through some experience I had this week with grief. So we are approaching my dad's birthday. It's Saturday and it would have been his 79th birthday. I had to do the math on that a couple times because I just was having a hard time wrapping my mind around the fact that, that this will be our, his fifth birthday without him here. And one of the hard things about grief is the fact that you keep moving forward, your life keeps going, and and the person or the being that you've lost starts to feel a little further away. And you and you when you look back like I did and and realize it's been five years, it's it's like, man, how much did I miss that I would have been able to be with this person in this five years? Who so I was feeling a little griefy earlier this week. That's the word I used to de define that feeling of grief to describe it. It's griefy because it's not exactly sadness. It's, it's got its own, I think it's its own emotion. So I gave it a word, it's griefy. So I was feeling griefy earlier this week. And, and the way this manifested was I was just kind of sitting on my couch, maybe watching TV or messing with my phone. I don't remember exactly what I was doing. And I felt it come up. I felt this emotion come up and and so it took me a second to identify it like oh it's grief I'm feeling griefy and then it took me a couple seconds to mentally process it oh yeah dad's birthday is this weekend like okay that makes sense and and then I felt the emotion I cried a little bit and and then I let go I have a history of grief I've talked about some of the grief that I've been through in my life I, I've lost a lot of people in my life, and especially in the last few years, I've lost my beloved Beagle, who I've talked about was really my, my best friend through all of the miscarriages that I had. And every time I lost a pregnancy, that was another occasion to, to grieve. So I really learned how to grieve. I've, I've made the joke with people that I'm a professional griever, and, and the way that I learned how to grieve was to surrender to grief. The only way, the only way through is through, if that makes sense. The only way out is through. So what I found when I was grieving, especially my miscarriages, I had to just let myself grieve. I had to let myself express. Sometimes I would be screaming in grief. I would make these noises that should not come out of a human body. And, and I was okay with it. I learned that if I just let it flow, then I would have even the tiniest bit of relief. Sometimes that relief was just like, oh, I'm too tired to cry and I can sleep now. And, and in the moment that maybe doesn't feel like relief, but, but it is there, there's a cycle. Grief is definitely cyclical. So I've done a lot of grieving and it's something that I really learned how to surrender to. And so as I had this experience the other day where I was I was feeling griefy about my dad, I started thinking afterwards. First of all, I spiritually processed that almost instantaneously. And and we're going to go through that, we're going to unpack that a little bit, but but that's always our goal is to process in the moment, right? And so that's pretty impressive. That's an area of my life where I have learned to process in the moment. And the way that I learned to do that was, was to stop holding on, was to stop holding back and just let go and just surrender. So after I had this experience, I had this like visceral realization. And we've talked about that before on this show. You can understand something in your mind. Like my, my mentor Sherry used to say, like, you know it here, but you don't know it here. So you can understand something intellectually, you can have a grasp of a concept, but until it comes fully into your body, into your emotional body and your physical body and your energetic body, 
it's not really a realization. It, it's That's part of that processing. Again, like in spiritual processing, we start in the mental space and then we come into the physical and the emotional space. So I had this visceral realization that why can't I do this in the rest of my life? If I can surrender so fully in this one area of my life when it comes to dealing with grief, why can't I do that with everything? Why can't I do that with all of my fear and all of my anger and all of the things that come up that, that I hold on to, that I'm physically holding in my body and in my emotional field? And, and I felt in my body, I felt the truth of this in my body. It's, whew, it's actually going to, like I really, I could feel it in all the places where I hold that emotional tension. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. It was exhilarating and it was also really scary because surrender is always scary. So let's unpack this a little bit. Let's go through this a little bit, kind of step by step, because I want to go into exactly what happened and then talk a little bit more about letting go and talk a little bit more about that holding, the holding that we have in our body. So I mentioned spiritual processing. I talk about it a lot. If you're not familiar with it, you can go to my website, which is paulataylorenergy.com. It's the most recent blog, paste, blog post on the homepage. And um, read more about it because it really has changed my life. It's something that came to me while I was working with a client. And, and the more that I work with it, the more I realize how powerful it is. And uh, it gives you a framework to really process just about anything in your life. So let's go through the steps of that really quick in, in terms of my example, of my grief example. So, so step one is awareness. And that I say this probably every week, but step one in almost any spiritual practice and psychological, emotional practice is awareness. You can't change something if you can't see it, if you're not aware of it. So I realized I'm feeling this emotion. I was able to label it as grief. I'm feeling griefy. So that's the awareness. So then the second step is mental processing. So that was th that step where I thought, oh, okay, my dad's birthday is Saturday. Like, this makes sense to me. I understood it in the mental space. But as I just mentioned, that's not enough. Understanding stuff in the mental space is where a lot of us stop because it's less scary. If we rationalize, if we explain things to ourselves, we can stay stuck in that cycle for the rest of our lives and never come fully down into that energetic, emotional, and physical space that's in the body. So step three is that emotional and physical processing. So in my example, I understood what was going on. I let myself experience the emotion. I cried, which is the physical release of that energy, of that emotional energy. And then I got to what in the blog post I call the bonus step, which is letting it go. And then I realized all of a sudden, holy crap, <laughs> this is not the bonus step. This is actually the most important step of this process, the letting it go part. They're all really important. That leap from the mental to the physical energetic, that, that going from step two to three is essential, absolutely essential. But letting it go is how we actually release it from the body. We emote, we cry, that energy is released, but most of us don't really let it go we maybe have a release and then we kind of take a little bit of it back in with us. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about why I think that happens. So that fourth step, that bonus step of letting go is, is the cement that, that seals that process, that spiritual processing process. As I realized, why can't I apply this lesson of processing and surrendering, letting go of grief in the rest of my life. I started thinking about this. I started processing that in my mental space a little bit. Like, well, why, you know, why can't I do this? There's no reason why I can't do this. And so I started sort of thinking into, you know, what are the barriers here that are stopping me from just surrendering in all areas of my life? Right before I was getting on this this pod podcast, it is a podcast, this video and podcast and live show, 
I was thinking about intuition and I was thinking about how all of the work I do is intuitive. And I was thinking about, we've talked about getting out of your way, getting the ego out of the way. That's really what surrender is. That's really what intuition is. It's letting go of that need to control and letting that divine energy and knowledge and guidance flow in and, and live through us. So again, it's exhilarating, but that's actually really scary. It's very threatening to the ego. We've talked about that a lot. We're not going to go into that much tonight. I want to talk a little bit about the physical aspect of holding. So as I was trying to kind of think into this, like, well, why can't I surrender in all the areas of my life? Like, I'm really good at it in this one area. And I want to be very clear. I'm not challenging the universe to give me more grief to work on. I, I have process plenty of grief. I'm just stating that this is an area in which I feel really comfortable. I feel like I can process almost in the moment. And that's not true in a lot of other areas in my life. So why is that the case? So I started thinking about the tension that we hold in our bodies. And and like this whole <laughs> this whole time I've been talking, like my chest is just like ah, like my shoulders are creeping up like by my ears and and there's this tightness across the front of my chest and and my throat and neck and and there's a lot of tension many of us most of us carry so much tension in our neck shoulders and upper back area and in our and our throat in the front of those two in the chest so we have these patterns of holding and why did they develop they developed as protection and as i started thinking about this that word empath came to me a lot of people don't like that word and, and I used to describe myself as an empath. I'm a person who feels other people's emotions and I'm, and I'm sensitive to energy. I'm spiritually sensitive. But here's the thing. Every single person on earth is spiritually sensitive. They may be closed off to it, but they are spiritually sensitive. So when you exist in the world, when you walk out into the world, whether you're aware of it or not, all of the other energies of everything you encounter in this plane is entering your energetic field. So you might not believe in energy. You might think it's a whole bunch of crap, but I got news for you. It is still affecting your energy and it is affecting how you feel that you have to protect yourself physically because energy is physical matter. We can't see it, but it's physical matter. So when other energies come into our energetic system, we start to develop these patterns of tension, of holding. And, and the perfect example, I just mentioned my chest and my upper back and my, my shoulders. So I, I think I've talked about this even on the show before. And it's really interesting because when I thought about this, I was trying to think about how long it's been since I've actually experienced this. And it was one of those moments where I was like, wow, I have made so much progress. So I have many, many, many times had the experience of feeling like someone punched me in the chest. Energetically, I'm very sensitive and I'm very aware of energy. And so like when I'm having a conversation with someone, sometimes I actually get distracted from what they're saying to me because their energy I can feel their energy. And here's the thing about energy. 99% of us, maybe less, 80% of us, a very high percentage of us are using our energy completely unintentionally. There's no intention. And so sometimes somebody really thinks that they're, let's say, having a loving conversation with you. But what's happening on the energetic level is like they're throwing darts at you. They're, th they're th launching cannonballs at your lighthouse, to, to give an example from uh, last week's show. So I can feel that in my body when when somebody when I feel energetically attacked. I don't I don't like the word attacked, but it's the way that it feels to me. And again, it's not necessarily intentional when when someone is doing this. A lot of people are just out there like when you're driving, you can see it the most. I can almost sometimes I can like see spikes coming out of somebody's car when they're like weaving around and cutting someone off. Like their energy is just like whoa. And, and so I, I have felt multiple times like somebody kicked me or punched me in the chest. And so I have a pattern, and most of us have this physical pattern of kind of rolling forward. And some of that is physical. It's, it's the computer work we do, absolutely. 
But energetically, that is a protective motion. I am protecting my heart space from that energetic attack, from that energy entering into my space. And I have a good example of this that I just noticed today. Like, it's always interesting to me, like how I start thinking about something and then it's a cascade of, of recognizing it and seeing examples in my life. So I went to the gym today and I, and I would like to say that everyone at my gym is masked and it's a very small space. There's not a lot of people there. So I went to my gym, I was wearing my mask and and I walked into one of the, there's like a few different rooms. So I walked into one of the rooms and there was a, there was only one lady in there. There was only like four people in the whole place. There was one lady in there. And as soon as I walked into the space, it was like, I mean, she was shooting me daggers with her eyes. Like she, I think she was intentional. It in some, at some level, she was intentional with her energy. And it was like, get the F out of here. This is my space. That was the energy that came off this lady. And she, she looked at me in the mirror and like, I was like about to be like, oh, hey. And, and I was not, I didn't go anywhere near her. I was working in a different part of the room. That's just her energy. Unfortunately, that's probably her energy all the time. And, and instead of, I could feel it. Absolutely. I could feel it. But it never got even close enough to me to 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 feel that bodily reaction. I recognized it right away. And then as I have learned to do, I just expanded. I just expanded in love. And I and I I thought toward this lady like, I am so sorry that you are so unhappy that it is just spilling out of you onto the world around you. But I don't have to let that energy in my space. And as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about, I believe in my grasp of quantum physics is like very, very minimal. So I am in no way an expert in, in that science. But I remember reading about how they discovered in quantum physics that, that two particles can actually occupy the same space at the same time. And that's what I started thinking about in terms of this energy. So I went into this space and I just expanded. And so my expansive energy was in that space, absolutely. And that lady's pokey, angry energy was also in that space. And they were both just coexisting peacefully in that space. I didn't try to change her energy because that's not what I'm there for. And, and I can't do that anyway. I could hold space for her to see it and change it. But, but that's not what I was there for. I was there for myself and, and doing my own thing. But for years, I mean, for 40 something years, I would have not even walked into that room because I would have felt that energy and I would have just done this and like backed away, physically backed away. That's really a shame. It's kind of a tragedy. And first of all, I'm very grateful that I have made enough progress to the point where I'm not doing that anymore. But it also really got me thinking about this idea of surrender. Because so what is surrender? Surrender is really just an expansion. Letting go is really just an expansion. It's really just saying to that divine source, that divine energy, whatever word you want to use for that, use me. I am yours. I am at your service. I surrender. And the flow of energy in our life, like with that grief that I talked about, when we surrender to that, we're not meant to hold on to things. I've told this story before about uh, Eckhart Tolle talks about how he saw, he was at a, a pond and he saw two ducks or geese get into a fight and, and they were fighting and they were really going at it. And then at the end of the fight, they both shook off and they walked away. That was them letting go. So they shook that off and they walked away and I guarantee you they went back to their friendly duck goose relationship, whatever they normally had. And we have lost that ability as people. We have trained ourselves that we need so much protection that we hold on to things. And sometimes we hold on to things out of fear. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So there's a couple different layers that, that I think is our going layers are is going on. I'm having grammar problems tonight. There's a couple of different layers happening in this fear of, of surrender, of letting go. So there's that ego fear. We've talked about that a lot. We're not going to go into that tonight. It's absolutely there. That little ego mind that's like, no, I'm in control. I'm in charge. It's like a little kid that doesn't want to 
eat their vegetables or whatever. That's the ego. Eh. So putting that aside, beyond that, we have a fear of moving forward because we're afraid of the unknown. And there's that old saying about the devil you know, it's better to, to live with the devil you know, or something like that. I don't know the whole thing, but that idea that you might be in a terrible situation, a very traumatizing situation, but it feels familiar to you. And so there's comfort in that. Even in the discomfort of that traumatizing situation, there's there's familiarity and comfort in that. So, so part of our fear of surrender is the fear of progress, really. Like when I was thinking about this in my own life, I thought, what am I really afraid of? I mean, the example that I have in my life where I really have surrendered is, is beautiful. It's this free flow of grief that and grief is hard and, and terrible and painful and absolutely there's parts of it that just feel like you're never going to get to the other side. And that's the other layer of fear. So the first layer of fear is just the unknown. What happens when I do this? And and so then when I thought through that, I was like, well, what happened to me is that I've got this whole area of my life that, that flows and is really beautiful and that I don't have to worry about because I know that I can process through it. I know how to work with it. So the fear underneath that, underneath the fear of the unknown or maybe adjacent to it or along with it, I don't, it doesn't matter where it is in space. But the other fear is, I just, I knew that was going to happen tonight. I totally lost my train of thought and I was like, this is going to happen to me at one, one point tonight. I'm going to have to look at my notes and be like, where the heck, what am I talking about? And it's funny because it's so scary. I couldn't even talk about it. I had to go back and look at what I wrote down. So the first fear is that fear of the unknown. And, and that's scary enough. But beyond that is actually the fear that we will never get out. That we will get stuck in something. And especially when it comes to emotions. So when you're in fresh grief, acute grief, it is like a physical weight on your body. Like you feel like you can't move. You feel like you can't function. And, and there's a sense that that will never end. There's a sense that you will never get out of that. And that fear is immense. And so the idea of being in this place where you're already barely functional and then just going, I surrender in our, in our conscious mind, in our ego mind, it feels like getting up, giving up, and we're taught not to do that. That's one thing. But it also, it feels like we're giving permission for this horrible, heavy thing to never leave us. When in fact, it's the exact opposite. It's the surrender to whatever the emotion is that allows it to flow through and allows us to process and let go. Emotions aren't meant to be stored in our bodies. Like when you look at those animals in the wild, that story of the ducks or the geese, they didn't store that energy. They had that angry energy. There was absolutely emotional energy there or, you know, instinctual energy, whatever you want to call it. <sighs> they shook it off and they let it go. And they didn't walk away like, okay, that's in my shoulder now. I guess that's going to be there for the rest of my life. I talked a few weeks ago about holding negativity in my belly and, and having a realization of the moment that that pattern cemented itself in me. So all of this to me was a huge lesson. This is a huge lesson in that idea that yes, surrender, letting go is scary. It's scary because it's unknown. It's scary because we feel like we'll never get through it. Going straight into that emotion of grief, you know, you could try to run away from it. But the problem is the more we shove stuff down, the more we want run away from stuff. It's kind of like that story about the lady in the gym today. So I could have gone in there with no awareness of what her energy was doing. And I might have left that room because that's, that's what her energy was telling me. And I might not have had any idea why. I might have walked in there and just been like, well, I guess I'm not in the mood for this today. But because I have awareness about that, then I can actually choose my next move. And a lot of times we are just living so unintentionally. And I'm absolutely guilty of that. That's what I saw when I had this realization in my body. I don't need to hold this tension in my shoulders anymore. What am I protecting myself from? There's nothing to be afraid of. Spiritually, 
I am a goddess. I am expanded. I am beautiful. I am divine. It doesn't get any better than that. So why would I stop that flow? Why would I run away from that divine energy that I have access to at any time? If I can just say, I let go, please come. I let go, come through me and, and do your work. Inspire me to work with you rather than shoving you out or running away. Whew. So I hope <laughs> I got a little heated there and then I got a little off track and, and distracted, but I just think this is so important. We've talked about letting go before we've done, a, I think whole shows about surrender and letting go. And so I want to work with that tonight in our meditation. And how do we do that? One of the best ways to bypass fear is with sound. So we're going to absolutely use some sound tonight. One of the other best ways to bypass fear, to move through fear, because we're not really bypassing fear. So we bypass the conscious mind using, using sound. It kind of just works its magic whether we want it to or not. But we move through emotion using breath. So we're going to use breath and sound tonight and really focus on letting go on a physical level, on an emotional level, on a, on a mental level, and, and then on an energetic overall level. So just very quickly before we start, I did a whole show where I explained oxytocin breathing. I talk about it a little bit each week. I want to go into just a little bit of detail because this is an, a really important breath for letting go. There's actually a surrender oxytocin breath. You can do oxytocin breathing with different intentions and surrender is one of the intentions. So as you do your oxytocin breath, you're going to breathe in and draw your energy, draw your breath into the belly, really let the belly float out. So we're not breathing here. This is where we breathe from fear. We're not breathing into the chest and the, and the shoulders. We're breathing into the belly. And then as we breathe out, Ah, we're making that audible ha sound and that actually vibrates the vagus nerve, which is the nerve that helps bring us out of the sympathetic, which is control, which is that tightness, which is that tension into the parasympathetic, which is relaxation and surrender. And I think this whole topic really came to me. One of my really good friends had posted about ease. She talks about ease a lot. And the oxytocin breath is, I learned from her to bring my body into ease. But I realized I've gotten pretty good at bringing my body into ease, but I never moved beyond my body. What if I brought ease into my mind and into my heart space, into my emotional space? And what is ease is really just another word for surrender, for relaxation, for letting go. So we're going to do that tonight using that oxytocin breath and using some sound. So let's meditate together. So find yourself a comfortable position. If you'd like to lie down for this one, feel free. If you think you might fall asleep, then you might choose to sit up. Let yourself be supported in whatever pose you choose here. If you choose to sit up, maybe you've got your back against a chair, you've got your feet on the ground. Let yourself feel really safe and supported as we begin. Take a few of those nice deep oxytocin breaths, breathing into the belly and then sighing them out. And do this with the intention to surrender, to let go. Just let that word, whichever one you like better, letting go or surrender, let that be in your mind hold that as you take two or three more deep oxytocin breaths <sighs> you might even think to yourself i surrender as you breathe out one more time <sighs> A 
allow your crown chakra, the top of the head, to gently open. Call in that divine energy, that divine light. And just let it flow all the way through your body and down into your feet. Surrender to the flow of this golden light, this unconditional love that is the true source of your being. Let go of any resistance, any fear. Just for the next few moments in this meditation, allow yourself to fully surrender. You are completely safe. You can draw your energetic sanctuary around you. If you're not familiar with that idea, just think about being in the most beautiful place you can imagine, the safest space you can imagine, and see yourself there. Bring it into the room with you. Take one more deep oxytocin breath, and as you breathe out, think, I surrender, or I let go. And then start to notice the areas of holding in your body, the areas that didn't maybe want to surrender. You can move around a little bit if that feels appropriate, if that feels good to you. And we're going to focus on the physical body for the next few moments here. How would it feel in your body if you just let go? How would it feel in your body if you just let go? How would it feel in your body if you just let go? Take a deep oxytocin breath into your belly and as you sigh it out, let go of any tension, any holding in the body, really surrender. And again, take another deep breath breath into the belly and as you breathe out surrender that physical tension let it go (sighs) how would it feel in your body if you just let go how would it feel in your body if you surrendered fully How would it feel in your body if you just let go? Take another deep oxytocin breath and as you sigh it out, let go of that physical holding. You're in a very safe space now. Just completely let go of that tension, of that pattern of protection. You don't need to be protected in this space because you are safe, because you are a divine being. You never need protection. Divine light and love flow through every cell of your body, every single moment of every single day. How would it feel in your body if you just let go? How would it feel in your body if you fully surrendered? How would it feel in your body? If you just let go, take another deep oxytocin breath, breathe through any emotions that are coming up and then sigh everything out. Let go, surrender, surrender to that light that is within you, that is all around you. Let that energy dominate your physical body. Over all other energies you encounter, this energy of love fills you physically. It fills your bones. It fills your muscles and your skin and your organs. It fills your brain. It fills your throat and your chest and your belly. It fills your hips and your pelvis and your feet. How would it feel in your body if you just let go? One more big, deep oxytocin breath here and sigh out any remaining tension. And be gentle with this. If there's anything left over, don't beat yourself up about it. Come back to this. 
keep practicing and your body will trust you more and more. Your body will trust this exercise. Your body will surrender as you hold this space of love for that surrender, as you call in that divine light and love for surrender. Bring your awareness now to your mental space. Maybe you feel those thoughts swirling around. Maybe you feel like your thoughts are running the show sometimes. Don't try to change them. Just focus on that mental space. How would it feel in your mind if you just let go? How would it feel in your mental space if you just let go? How would it feel in your thoughts if you just let go? Take a deep oxytocin breath into the belly. And as you sigh that out, surrender those thoughts. Surrender that mental holding. Just let it go. How would it feel in your mind if you just let go? How would it feel in your mental space if you just let go? How would it feel in your thoughts if you just let go? Take a deep breath into the belly. Breathe through any emotions that are coming up and sigh that out. Surrender that mental holding. Surrender that mental energy back into the universe to be recycled for the highest good. Recognize that this exercise is for your highest good. Letting go of that mental gripping of holding those thoughts is for your highest good. How would it feel in your mind if you just let go? How would it feel in your mind if you fully surrendered to love? How would it feel in your mind if you just let go? Take another deep breath into the belly and sigh it out. Surrender into this flow of love and light. Allow that mental energy to let go. No more holding in that mental space. Let it be quiet and still. Bring your body now to your emotional body, your emotional state. Think about how you've been feeling emotionally in your life lately. Think about where you're holding emotions and it may bring you to an area of your body and that's fine, but focus on the emotions themselves, the actual feelings. How would it feel? In your emotional state if you just let go? How would it feel emotionally if you fully surrendered? How would it feel in your emotional body if you just let go? Take a deep breath into the belly and as you sigh it out, let go of that emotional holding surrender. No need to hold on to emotions, let them flow. Let them come up and just flow through and out as they're meant to. How would it feel in your emotional being if you just let go? How would it feel to allow your emotions to rise and then flow through and then let them go? How would it feel emotionally if you just let go? Take a deep breath into the belly, breathe through any emotions that are coming up and surrender to those emotions, surrender that holding and trust that you will move through them. Trust that you can move through the fear of moving forward, through the fear of getting stuck if you just let go. How would it feel in your emotional body if you just let go? How would it feel in your physical body 
if you allowed your emotions to flow freely, if you surrendered to those emotions and let go? How would it feel in your mental space if you allowed your emotions to flow and then let go? Breathe into the belly and then sigh that breath out. Use that ha sound to surrender, to release any holding in the physical body, in the mental body, in the emotional body. Fully release, fully surrender. Feel how safe you are. Feel how loved you are. Feel how divine you are. And surrender to that. How would it feel in your energetic body if you just let go? How would it feel in your whole being if you just let go? How would it feel to your soul if you could fully surrender? Take a deep breath into the belly and sigh it out and let yourself surrender, let go. Let go of any energetic holding. Let go of those patterns of protection you no longer need. You are a divine being. Your spirit is divine. It needs no protection. It will hold the space you need it if you surrender and let it. How would it feel in your energetic space if you just let go? How would it feel in your living space if you just let go? How would it feel in your family if you just let go? Take a deep breath into the belly and as you sigh that out, surrender fully, let go. Any holding that's left, gently encourage it to let go with love, with respect. How would it feel in your community if you just let go? How would it feel in your country if you fully surrendered? How would it feel in the world if we all just let go? Take a deep breath into your belly and sigh it out. Let go of anything you can here, any lingering tightness or tension in the physical body, in the mind, in the emotional space, in the world around you, in the energy you encounter, in the energy you put out into the world. Surrender to your soul, to your highest self, to divine flow to the highest good for all. Take a deep breath into the belly. And as you sigh it out, just let go. Just let go, just let go. Take one last deep oxytocin breath and allow yourself to surrender anything else you'd like to let go of, anything that comes to you intuitively is perfect in this moment. Surrender anything you'd like, anything you can. Surrender those physical patterns of holding, the emotional patterns of holding, the mental patterns of holding. No need for protection here. You are safe. You are loved. You are light. Ooh. 
You are safe. You are loved. You yourself to sit for just a moment, noticing the shift in your body, in your mind, in your heart space. Take any last deep breaths as you'd like to. If you'd like, you can gently allow that crown chakra to close or leave it open for the highest good, knowing that you are protected. As long as you state that intention for the highest good. Wrap that around you now in the space around you for the highest good. Let it cocoon you in that energy, that divine light, that unconditional love. Let it come into your body, into your head and your throat and your chest. Let it come into your belly and your hips and your knees and your feet. All cells of your body, all the energy in and around your body is holding this intention for the highest good. This unconditional love that is always for the highest good. As you're ready, you can begin to move your fingers and your toes Maybe roll your wrists and hands. Move your head and neck around if you like. Shake anything out that has any tension. Release anything that's left. Shake your whole body a little bit if you like. Shake your arms, legs. Kick your grid around with your feet. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for having the courage to be present, to hear this message, even if you feel like you're not ready to fully surrender. A little part of you surrendered tonight and that flow will come into the space that's left. And then you'll have that courage as I have seen to start surrendering more in more areas of your life, life and letting that flow in. Have a beautiful rest of your evening. Have a flowing rest of your week. And I will see you next week for Wind Down Wednesday. Mm -hmm.